Alrighty, got the uh, laser modeling kit ready for shingles here. I got the trim on, I got the roof panels on. What I just do is I just paint just around the edge a little bit of, I use Vallejo black gray. Especially since this is so darn white. Which is probably even blowing out the camera. Doo -doo -doo. Um, just in case there's any gaps or anything like that, it, it, so it's a dark color, not the obvious white. And then here on the end, again, full disclosure, I didn't do this quite per the instructions, only because I think I lost a part. They say there's a piece that runs along, I think along the sides, wraps around the end underneath the eave. Okay. I don't have those parts. And I, I looked, I tore apart both boxes. I don't have them. Did I mistakenly discard it at some point in time? You know, thinking, not knowing what it was, and who knows. But I did put in this piece and this piece on the edge of the roof. I'm just going to leave that off. And I probably could make it. I think all it would be, all you're really going to see would be a, a piece that sticks here. They put another triangle piece on top of it. And it is it is visible in the prototype photos. But looking at this, you probably wouldn't say it's missing I mean, again, general viewers, you're going to know because I'm telling you. But I just don't feel like taking the time to make these. And I was actually going to make them for the whole length. But I was like, you don't really need to because it's hidden, I think, underneath the eave. It just wraps around. Now, I, I did email laser modeling to get the, the size of the part. Not, I didn't want them to send me one. I just wanted the dimensions I could make something on. But I don't want to wait been two days and they could be busy they could be off doing stuff i'm just whatever so that's the way that's going to be back here i really did a pretty poor job it's it's because of the assembly of the, of the sides so it might be hard to tell maybe i covered up but i scabbed in a 1 16th inch square piece <laughs> to make it to fill in the horrible gap that was there only on this corner so again i, I don't know why what i did wrong with this building but so, that is ready to go. What I may do, however, is, first of all, flip it over and do all the wiring. You know, I have all the leads from the LED LEDs in there, then these little doodads from these tiny little ones that I need to add an LED driver to, and then just bring down one set of leads. So, that's a lot of work under there. I might do that now, so I can lay it right on the roof and uh, take care of that, just to get it out of the way. Now this kit, panning over here, doo -doo -doo -doo, is also ready to be shingled. I might want to do a little bit of touch up, just a little bit, on some of the edges, but all the trim is in. Uh, I did have to make another Natalie Dormer here. That goes on later, but it's done. So set that aside. <clears throat> might start with this roof here. This gets tar paper. On that side and I think all the other ones I think all get shingles and I'm gonna cheat on this one they do give you the the, the nice thing about the laser modeling kit they give you self adhesive shingles you know it's still individual strips okay I can deal with that this one isn't and I don't feel like doing the double-sided tape or glue so I'm gonna cheat I got these Northwest scale Northeast scale lumber Northeastern scale lumber and I just think I saw the green and I said, I bet that green will look pretty cool. You know, weather it up a little bit, tone it down, get some nice, you know, brown, light earth tones on that. That's going to look pretty damn cool. Probably keep this one, the tar paper roof uh, from the kit. That isn't hard to do. That's just cutting strips and putting that down. But they're a lot bigger than individual roses shingles. <laughs> so I'm probably going to use these on this side. And then, you know, also for the rest of these. So this is really simple. I mean, literally, you, you just, you know... Spread down some canopy glue, and you take these, cut the size, and go ba-boom. And you're done! Alright. So, I might start on this. If I feel like getting something accomplished, you know, so I can see visually. You know what I mean? Because, again, if I work on the electronics and anything, you're not going to see it. I mean, I have to do it. So, I might do this, let it dry, and then flop over and work on the wiring underneath the other building. Alright. More to come as we get a little further along, folks.
Okay, here's the electrical varline for underneath the laser modeling 3 kit. I have an incoming power. I just used some 22 zip cord just because I had it. And you can see I ran a bus, a uh, the 12 volt positive bus up here, the negative bus here. These are all the LED strips. 5 and 5, positive and negative. Then we come through a current limiter to the two LEDs over the doors that are in series. So this goes to the obviously to the anode, cathode to anode, cathode comes over and is soldered to the end of the bus there. So now I can roll up this, keep it underneath, and then when I go to connect it, just drop that through over to a terminal board for 12 volts and ba boom. And I did test it. Everything works okay. I didn't blow up anything. <laughs> All right, now it's time to do some shingling. Alrighty, so here we are. So this is the Laser Modeling 3 kit, now called, renamed the Vernondale Machine Company. <laughs> Got the shingles on. I did the shingles right out of the kit. I didn't do anything. I didn't cheat on this one. I actually used the shingles that came with it. They are self-adhesive, and no, I did not put down a row of double-sided tape. I know I'll get some comments that I should have done that. Seemed to stick pretty good, so I'm happy with it. I think if there's any issues, I'll just go back with a little bit of canopy glue and stick them down, but I really don't notice anything yet. Um, needs to be weathered. That's not done yet. Just kind of letting it sit overnight. I'm probably not going to put anything wet on it. Just because I know, uh, do I really trust that self-adhesive? <laughs> if I start putting some acrylic washes on it, I'll just use some pigments and weather it up a little bit. So, I had a fun little event last night. Uh, when I finished shingling, I had the building turned around opposite the way it is here. And I went to do something, and I caught the corner, and it jumped up, and I broke the steps. Can you believe that? I was like, are you kidding me? Here, here are some of the pieces. Yeah, isn't that fun? So, yeah, you can understand the uh, the reaction I had. But I was like, well, Rob, relax, calm down. It's not the end of the world. Because what I actually had been thinking of doing, you know, this, this is the side that will be on the um, from the aisle. So this is the side you're going to look at. I did add these doors, by the way. Um, what I want to do, I think, is add a dock out here. The kit doesn't have anything, which is a little surprising. Anyway, so I have a, a Blair line kit that I got from a friend of mine. And I'm thinking of doing something out here. I was like, well, well, wait a minute. What if I just brought it over here, brought it out so the door comes out onto the dock as well. And then I can just add a pair of stairs, or some stairs coming down here. That would be easy to build. Maybe even use two of these to make a little bit longer dock. Then you can put some more paraphernalia out there that they're loading up for locals coming in a truck back into or something like that so i'm thinking of doing that and in fact the blair line kit comes right about the perfect height so i may do that because i do have room in the front here to add a little dock i was going to do it for this for for certain for this but then i thought well since i messed this up <laughs> we'll just say they extended the dock and cover that up and i'm not just i'll just leave it there like they added over it at some point in time. So, okay. We'll fix that problem. Um, like I said, the doors were added. I do have the machine shop. Or I'm sorry, the boiler room. Yeah, the main building is the machine shop. Boiler room is built. That has to be installed at some point in time. So, let's kind of see where we are here. Let's just do a little bit of a pan. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Into the structiones. So, it says to... Uh, finish the roof. Yep, I will do that. Got to weather the roof. Build the dock. Done. I did that. Build the steps. Done. So next I say add the dock. Okay. Build the doors and install them. I did that. That's done already. So check. Build that fancy schmancy cover. Did that. It's not mounted yet, but it's done. Okay. Ah, the metal roof. Yes. And the technique they use is with the, um, it's aluminum with the PCB etchant, which I do have. 
See you back there. Do, 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 do. Now, I don't know. That's old. I don't know if there's a shelf life on this stuff. I, I, I guess I can try it and see if it works. I have done this before, so I know the process very, very carefully. Dip it in there, and it starts to go and bubble and look all fizzy. Then you pop it in water. I've done it. I've ruined a lot of pieces, but I have successfully done that. Okay. So then you have the cover. Oh, they want nut bolt washers out here. Great. Better do that before I mount it. Okay, then it's building a machine shop, which is actually done. It's all the boiler, which is done. So I guess then you glue this to the building. So, And then you add all the rafters, and then the, it's etched roofing as well. And then it was the coal pit, which I did already in a previous video. I got many, many comments. I'm a knucklehead because people are going to come down the stairs and hit their head on the beams. See that right there? See? Go back and look at that video. See, I built it right per the damn kit. So I know. It is crazy. You're going to come down, you're going to hit your head. All right, anyway. That's got nothing to do with this at all. That's a video from like a year ago or whatever. So the next steps on the laser modeling three are to... I think I'm going to weather the roof. Get that done. because I don't want to be spinning the building with the dock on, the canopy on, with this glued on. So we'll do that. We'll get the roof done. Then start gluing on the other accoutrements. Get this glued on and done. Because, you know, the more you add that stuff, now you got to start being real careful. You know, I don't want to be flipping the building with all that stuff on it. It gets more and more fragile as you get this closer and closer to actually being completed. And then when that's done, other than probably adding the electrical drop, you know, maybe a little bit of weather. I, I don't know. I'm not going to do a lot more weathering because I think it looks pretty darn good, actually. Uh, then it's pretty much... Oh, I do have... They, they don't call for it, but I, I have a gutter to add along here. It just seems odd to me that there'd be no... Both these kits don't have gutters, which just seems odd because otherwise you could just get water pouring off the roof. So I might add a gutter here because I think I messed up the eaves anyway on this kit, as I mentioned in the previous segment. So I probably will... Add a gutter, some downspouts. To that. I have them, it's just a small little um, wood channel that would look okay as a gutter. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it'd be something there. It gives me something on the edge, and to me, there should be a gutter. So that's kind of where we are on the laser modeling tray kit for the South River kit. That is here. Let me shed some light on this bad boy. So it's pretty much, I got the, you see, I got the roofs on. I still got to install the Natalie Dormer, the cute Natalie Dormer. Uh, that's got to go on here. That will be done shortly. Uh, I do need to cut some more trim for another, I'll show you in a moment. Not weathered yet. I still need to weather the roofs. You can see I got the shingles on. And for this one, I did cheat. I used the Northeastern Scale Lumber shingles. And I was able to get paper templates and cut it out. So they're all single pieces for those various areas. So that's needs to be weathered. Then, oh, I made the docks. Yeah, that was an adventure. Wow, talk about a, a royal pain in the... Boo, boo, boo. These are, <laughs> the way you make them, 4 by 8s and then 2 by 8s vertical with individual cut planks on the top. So, yeah, they're they're pretty fragile. And they are for, let's see, one of these will be here at some point in time. Yeah, that one goes there. And then one for the back. So that's those. Now, they're not, they still need supports and everything, but they're done. So they're all done. So let's see, let's break into the, uh, uh, so where are we here? On the uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, da -da -da. turn to page four in your textbook. Um, that's done yet. Weather the roof, I will certainly do that. The dormer is built, this needs to be glued on. The docks, yeah, I struggled through that last night. And then, whoops, sorry. Okay, so the docks are done. Roofs, okay, they do have um, some roofs, but that shouldn't be too terrible. Entry roofs, I'm probably not going to use. Because the one door at the end I added a light to. So I'm probably just going to leave those off. And then that's it. So wow. 
Well, that's not really it. Now I have to build the coal, the coal bins, the coal facilite. I actually did start. You can see I got the uh, the pieces here in the back. Yeah, they're AI treated and then they're warped. But I don't really care. I just kind of wish they rolled the other way. Because these are going to be wrapped around the the silos. So whatever, just let it warp. It'll be fine. I started the the roof down there. The roof. The roof is on fire. That's ready to go. Just kind of working ahead a little bit. Yeah, so there's, there's a whole nother. <laughs> yeah, this is not done yet. Got to build these. <clears throat> This looks like a lot, a lot of fun. We'll see if I can build things straight on this. Build the silos. That looks kind of tedious. So I got, I got this part going along here. Shingle, and there's all other, other stuff to do. Coal chutes and everything. So that looks kind of fun. Some more to come on that. So basically, in terms of the bulk of the South River kit, it's done. Uh, I do need to figure out weather. Yes, weather the. I mean, weather the roof. The roofs, the roofs. Figure out if I'm going to put the cover, the uh, dock covers, dock roofs on, and then get the dormer glued on, weathered up. As it's pretty much ready to spot it on the layout. Hmm, interesting. All right, so that's where we are. So we'll, we'll continue on and uh, hopefully wrap this babble fest up before too long. But uh, hey, there's more to come. So uh, stay tuned, folks. Okay, I figured I better show this, and I've been a little bit lax in making some video segments because when my son came home from University of Pittsburgh for Thanksgiving, he brought a cold with him and uh, just had to share it with me. So I've been a little under the weather. In fact, people have noted, complained about my Darth Vader voice. Well, it was really bad for a while, so I didn't record anything. But I figured I'd do this now because, again, some more frustration sun in. If I don't get it now, I'm, I'm going to just blast this and get it done. I'll never show you what I did. All right, so this is the coal tower. And I started off per the instructions. I was worried initially, and in fact, I, with, rightly so. One thirty-second scribe siding. You have to cut out uh, four or five inch pieces, stain them and paint them. I was like, oh, brother, here we go. Yep, sure enough. Using my ultra warp alcohol, they warp like crazy, even underweight, even for two nights. Anyway, I was like, oh, here we go. And then you got to glue them together because you don't get a whole piece. So I did that. You can see the vertical seam. I'm thinking, I'm not liking this already. Okay, then I tried to wrap it around uh, one of the silos that was made. And I just made them per the instructions. They're just made with. I uh, probably can just see it there. I just followed exactly per the instructions. The base, four vertical pieces, the little top part, not not an issue. Use a square, keep everything nice. That made them not an issue. And then try to wrap one of the pieces of warped siding around, and of course it cracked. Okay. I mean, there's no way this is going to wrap around without if I had to crack twice. The joint broke. I was like, okay, these are garbage. This is not going to work. And I, this one's still together, but I tried to wrap it, and I know it's going to... If you try to get it to the diameter... Eh, there you go. Eh, great. Okay, get, get out of here. All right, so... <laughs> In the meantime, I did build the roof. That was right for the instructions. Not an issue. I have it shingled with some different shingles from the kit. Need to be weathered up and everything. That that went together fine. Okay, it's, it kind of went together fine. Uh, it'd be hard to notice, but these windows are right. I put the windows on this side in upside down. So that back side's wrong. So yay, so that's going to be the back. So anyway, all right, so that's not a huge deal. Done. So then I'm thinking, all right, how in the world am I going to do this? Since this stuff's garbage and not going to work, at least for me, this obviously exceeded my skill level, what can I do? I had them made. So what I did... I thought about going out and buying, you know, like a two-inch wood dowel, um, maybe a or a two in, or a two-inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. But the OD of the Schedule 40 is two and three eighths, and obviously for a two-inch dowel, it's probably about two inches. I don't know how accurate they are. The actual diameter of this 
of these to get it, you know, right on is two and three sixteenths. So things weren't quite right. So I said, all right, stop, stop, stop. Let's just try doing it per their instructions. And maybe I can find something from Clever Models or something I could wrap around it. And you can see foreshadowing I did. So I went ahead and took the paper that comes with the kit, wrapped it around, glued it up, no issues. Okay, so that's that's how it should look. Actually, that's how it would be prior to putting this garbage on. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, <clears throat> the one thirty second scribe siding that most of you would probably get on, no problem. Get, get out of here. Get, get junk. So, I did that on both of them. And then I said, alright, something that came close was this Clever Models Red Distress Clapboard. I was looking at it, and I actually kind of liked it, because it kind of... Let me do a pan. It's you know it's kind of close to the siding on the building itself. So okay, close enough for me. Let me try this. So I did. I cut it. I cut it. First of all, I just printed it on just plain old paper, just regular you know copy paper. Made a template, wrapped it around, and said, okay, that looks that looks okay. Then I used this template to cut it out of the heavier one that I printed on 65 pound paper wrapped it around very carefully now this one when I first did it which I don't think I didn't do on this one on the four supports I put some glue and I think since it was you know starting to hold it caused this piece of paper to, to uh, kink a little bit it's like ah, I don't want to kink I want it to be nice and round or as round as possible but didn't seem to be an issue and then I carefully did this one same way I started put some glue down wrapped it around waited and then glued the overlap and it, it seems to be okay I think it'll look all right now perfect no the seam I'm gonna put in the middle this is kind of gonna be the middle so that I'm gonna try to hide the seam in here on both of them and then what I have to do on this yet well both of them eventually Take some of this nice little thread and wrap 16 or 17 times, make, you know, bands around and seem like a turnbuckle. And like, yeah, that's going to be like, you know, surgery without anesthesia. But okay, another fun thing to do. So I think that's going to work. So that's what I did. A failure, I gave up. I could not get the kit supplied material to work. So I came up with something different that I hope will look okay. Um, I, I think when it's all done... And I get it all together. I still need to do some trimming on, on that part there. You know, get the chute in, get the ladder on it, get the turnbuckles on. You know, relax, have a couple volumes. I, th I think it'll look okay. So that's that. So, <laughs> man, I, I really epic fail on that one, at least in terms of using that siding. I don't know what I did wrong. If anyone's built this kit, let me know. Were you able to successfully do that? I don't see how you could. Uh, you know, and to me, it would be so much easier, even as opposed to having the four vertical pieces of strip wood. Make this solid. You know, give me a tube that I could glue something around. That just seems to me an easier way to glue. You, you, you avoid risk and kinks or anything like that. And what do I know? So that's that. So that's the uh, cold choline tower. That was uh, really fun. Now, of course, now i got to work on getting these two finished up. And uh, hopefully it'll look okay when it gets in the layout. But it wasn't that interesting. <laughs> oh, man. This kit will never get done. Okay, here are the coal silos. And not really coal towers, so silos. I apologize. And this is the side that will be seen from the aisle. See, I got the two together. Got the bands on, which... <clears throat> yeah, it was it was a hassle, but it wasn't terrible. Now the back side, where I had to overlap and do the uh, super gluing, isn't the prettiest. But again, <laughs> on purpose I put that in the back. So that's the front. Coal shoots were added. I mean, it pretty much went together per the instructions. Once I figured out and got these two wrapped with the clever paper, and it was just pretty much making all the the coal shoots. They were fun. Yeah, they were, they were definitely an adventure. Tiny little pieces and real careful gluage. But it went together okay. Just take your time and things go okay. And then the actual 
conveyor that runs up to the tower is done and installed and that's pretty much made oh I apologize hold on oh these damn crank calls alright so that's the back like I said with the conveyor going up made you know pretty much per the instructions whether detailed you have to add a little bit of some of the coal shoots add some coal not a big deal you can see the kind of the ugliness in the back there there's the seam with that one and these overlaps are not the prettiest in the world uh -huh, uh -huh. but I, <laughs> yeah I did have the spiral pattern I'm supposed to have so that is sitting there ready to go in and that'll be this way like I said on the layout so I think it's gonna look okay now you can get pretty close so I wanted to try to you know that's why I wanted to make sure I had the coal shoots and uh, I will add some coal to it everything like that so all right that's that so that's how I salvaged it I guess could I say I salvaged it I think so I think it looks okay probably not quite as good if I'd been able to use the kit material but you know per the last segment you know what happened I just I just screwed that up so whatever but I think that'll be fine and we'll get on the layout and once you get involved in the scene I think it's gonna look good so all right there we go coal silos are ready to be installed Okay, getting close here. I'm gonna summarize kind of where we are in both the kits because uh, they're getting close to the layout. So the South River kit here is pretty much ready. All the roofing's done and been weathered up. This end here with the tar paper roof, the material right from the kit I used, cut it and installed as per instructions. I did have the little detail that came with it, the little cyclone there in the corner one vent it's not a very venti roof just the one down here again the dormer is installed I did add a chimney the chimney that came with the kit I absolutely hated um, really ugly casting so I went into my chimney box <laughs> grabbed one out of there and added some of the mortar lines and weathered it up a little bit with some powders so there you can see it's pretty much ready to go. I don't know if uh, the light's all that great to show everything, but okay. So now for this kit, what I may want to do is still here at the bench, while it's a little bit easier to handle, is figure out how high it's going to have to be. I need to do, do something over here for a loading dock. And the other loading docks are done. And I'll probably install them maybe once it gets on the layout. Or maybe I can glue them in. But again, I'm not exactly sure how, depending how high the building's going to sit, I don't know how high to make the supports yet until I get over on the layout. So I, I may just wait until I see what the earth under my feet looks like over there. But this is, uh, other than that, really pretty much set. Guy inside here, you probably can't see him. He's ready to get to work. All right, so that's the South River kit. As we spin it back, Ooh, finally, pretty much ready to go. So, all right, let's do a quick pause to take a look at the laser modeling kit and uh, see where that one is. Okay, the laser modeling three kit. You can see I did add that dock and I scratch built a little addition here. I wanted to put that little, little uh, crane on there that I had from a Walther's platform. Had it for years, was going to sell it, never did. Always kind of liked the look of that crane, figured at some point I'll use it. And I remembered I had it and said, oh, I'm going to go ahead and use it here. So, again, so this roof has been shingled. With the shingles right out of the kit and then weather it up a little bit with some uh, ammo of mig pigments and some vallejo washes as i slowly try to turn this okay now one must be careful when you get these this far along so the boiler room is done the roofs on that were cut again from the 
aluminum material, corrugated material, and then use the PCB board etchant to weather them. The smokestack came with the kit, just a brass tube. I painted uh, the Panzer Gray from Vallejo Hobby Spray. Touched it up with a little bit of to me uh, the red surface primer, and then put on the little washer that came in the kit there at the bottom, and then mucked it up a little bit with some of the Vallejo thick black mud. Just, and you can see it's there on the roof in a couple different places. I, oh, I added a little vent there. That's actually coming out of the boiler. There was a there's a line that runs outside. I'm, I don't know if that's how it would look, but hey, I had it in the box. So I said, "What the heck? I'll, I'll put this on there." <laughs> so carefully, carefully spinning this around, and then the back's got the platform and the canopy roof. Again, that roof is the same material, the same corrugated aluminum weathered with the PCB board etchant. That's the back side. You see the gutters, downspouts are on. So continuing our spin to the front. Kind of a nice plain rectangular building, but I think it's looking pretty good. I like it. I'm really happy with the way this is. I definitely use some different techniques on weather and the siding on both these kits. And I, personally, I like the way they turned out. I know you guys know I don't normally give myself praise, but I like the way these look. <laughs> the signs look good and everything. I just think they, I like them. I, I'm really pleased with the way I uh, was able to overcome a lot of the adversity on these kits and get these done. You can see there's some details added to the the dock there's some rusty stumps crates and a pallet and I've got some brass pieces I'm painting up this is you know some type of machine thing machined items that are going out to one of the local farmers or something like that some tools garbage a little piece of garbage paper there on the floor I'm not sure what I did there I just felt like adding that I don't know why it's got that little hook thing on it don't ask me hey I didn't make the I didn't build the building the owners did is really me but so this is again pretty much ready layout ready uh, oh the one thing I may need to do just dawned on me is just have the drop for the electric added which is not hard to do I don't know if I'll actually run the wires because again these are going to be so close to the front but at least they have that detail on it I just need to figure out where I want to put it and that won't be hard uh, so the, maybe just add that and then this one will be ready for the layout so that pretty much wraps up, and you, you saw the coal silos are ready to go. So that one, and then there in the back, the South River kit, waiting patiently. So now it's time to get the uh, layout ready for the items. Maybe do one little brief segment if I decide to do something for the South River kit on a uh, loading dock at the, at the one end of the building. But other than that, believe it or not, after how long, two hours plus, I don't know how long this video is getting to be, these things are actually ready for the layout. So, all right, more to come as we actually finally get these wrapped up and have some fun getting them, getting them installed on the actual layout. All right, so here's the new loading dock I'm going to add at this end of the building. And what I had to do... In order to get this to work, like I mentioned, to at least line up with a with a the door of a box car, which I figured if you if you're gonna have people load and unload a car, you have to have it line up so you can use a fork truck or a you know a pallet jack or something like that. Otherwise, you're just making people's lives miserable. So figuring that this is how they're gonna do it, I had to raise the building up quite a bit you can see this is all added it's about three-eighths of an inch luckily I had a big honking couple pieces of it yeah so I'm not sure where South River is coming on this but I don't know maybe again maybe it's just me but if you're gonna have a loading dock you've got to be able to load a boxcar without killing the poor people trying to work 
it's weird how certain things bother me and other things don't, but that just seems nonsense. All right, anyway, so this is a little bit of a scratch-built dock here. It's had it set in to verify. Oh, pardon my giant hand. That's going to be relatively close to the height of the boxcar. And that's just an old 25-cent boxcar from a train show I'm going to use to practice weathering. Heck, it's even got a hook-horn coupler on it. Woohoo! So this I made up. It's just some three 30-second scribe siding. And I just kind of cobbled something together here. It's not the greatest. It's just just to be a dock. Uh, the stairs from the kit were in there. I'm going to go ahead and stain it. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't warp. Then I'll probably come back. And I will add some nut bolt washers out here because this is going to be getting right in the front. Pretty visible. And I, I have some railings. I kind of set this up if I did it right for some titchy railings so people don't plummet to their demise. And I would, I'm thinking of, I don't know how it would look to have like one of the titchy jib cranes here. I don't want something real big. Uh, just something there that you know, people are coming in that are going to you know load their trucks uh, or unload and load rail cars, whatever. Just something there to help them with the, with the heavier things. I think they're putting it here in, in this corner. Since that's a nice big dock, this look pretty cool. You know, some details, maybe some some along here with chains and a chain fall. You know, they're kind of lifting accoutrements. Yeah, we'll see. That, those details can be done later, but I, I can't help. I like to fiddle around. So that's done. So I do have to figure out how high it's got to be to get it over onto the layout, which is again, much more than I thought. But all right, let's uh, get the dock stained up and. See what I can do. Oh, see what else I can do to it. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> Last final sweep. Just to show what they look like. Because now they're going on the damn layout. <laughs> I'm sick of fiddling around here on the bench long enough. So they're going to go on and we'll f do uh, some other stuff on the layout, of course. There's the dock. Like I said, they got that and weathered at the correct height. Actually, getting the Vernondale machine one will be pretty easy. That's just going to kind of sit on there. The uh, HW Niger will take a little bit more work, again, because of how raised up it is, but we'll get it. Do some terraforming and get it fit in and get the docks and final steps on. And then, of course, all kinds of Additional details will go on, especially for the loading dock, because I'm going to probably glue that on when it's in place, just depending on, again on how the <clears throat> excuse me how the land forms shape up. But then we'll detail that up, and like I said maybe add that titchy jib green. Oopsie, sorry, I'm trying to hold my LED light here because my lighting's not very good. All right, there you go. Two wonderful craftsman kits. All the fun and foibles and issues and mistakes and frustrations. But overall, very interesting. Very interesting. Again, for the first time I've actually built a kit, which turned into two kits of this caliber. Definitely learned a lot. I'd love to try something out like a fine scale miniature kit. I'm sorry, my darn light keeps <laughs> moving around. Like a fine scale miniature kit. Just to see how it compares. Because <clears throat> I've only got a, a laser modeling 3. And of course the South River kit under my proverbial belt right now. But we'll see. Alright. That's it. Hopefully it was in, uh, informative. I'm going to go ahead and just put this up and then the... Uh, the installation on the layout, I'll just do that as part of the normal, you know, uh, update videos. It's actually underway. I've actually been doing some of the work over there anyway, so it won't be too long until that video comes out showing these physically installed. So, that's it. Whew. What an adventure. <laughs> okay, well, if you made it through this all, all three parts, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I learned a lot. Maybe some of my mistakes and trials and tribulations 
helped others a little bit and gave some of the people the confidence to build one of these kits. Try it. it it's doable. It really is. Trust me, if I can build it, you can build it. <laughs> There's nothing special about what I do other than taking my time and following the instructions and thinking a little bit here and there, but it really isn't all that hard. So give it a shot. If you've got a kit like this, build it. Let me, let me know how it turns out. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. do appreciate it. More to come. Next update, we'll show these installed on the layout.